Here we are given a conservative vector field and asked to evaluate the line integral using two different forms. In the first case, we want to use a parametric description of C and evaluate the result directly. In part B, we, have, we want to use the fundamental theorem of line integrals. And we're given the function 5xy is equal to 2x plus 3y. And we're also given a parametric description of our curve C defined by vector r of t with components 2 minus t, t, from t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2. So let's start with part A here. We want to use a parametric description. So to get us started, we want to recall that since we have a conservative vector field, we can say that since our vector field f can be written as the gradient of our potential function phi, then we can make the following conclusions about our line integral. So we have the line integral over c of the gradient of phi dot the differential d vector r. We know that this is equivalent to the line integral c of the vector field f dot the differential d vector r. And then for computation, we keep in mind that we'll convert this line integral by parameterizing our vector field f in terms of the parametric description of our curve. So that becomes the vector field f of vector r of t. And we dot this with the tangent vector r prime of t dt. So the first thing that we need to do here is find the parameterization of our vector field. So keep in mind that we are given the potential function phi of xy is defined as 2x plus 3y. And we want to use this to find the gradient of phi. So we have the partial derivative of phi with respect to x is 2. And the partial derivative of phi with respect to y is 3. So we can say that, therefore, the gradient of phi, which is the vector containing the partial derivatives with respect to x and y, is equal to the vector 2, 3. And since, again, we know that this is a conservative vector field, we know that we can write our vector field f as being equivalent to the gradient of phi. So our vector f here is just 2, 3. So since there's no x or y components in this vector, the parameterized vector f of vector r of t is simply 2, 3. We have our first part completed. Next, we need to find the tangent vector. And we'll, again, we'll keep in mind here, since we are given the parametric description of our curve, which is the components are x of t, y of t, and this is given to us as 2 minus t, t. We note that the tangent vector, the derivative of this, is going to leave us with negative 1, 1. So now that we have these two pieces, we're ready to go ahead and dot them to find our integrand. So we have the parameterized vector field, and we are going to dot this with the tangent vector. So we have vector 2, 3 dotted with the vector negative 1, 1, which becomes, we have 2 multiplied by negative 1 plus 3 multiplied by 1, and negative 2 plus 3 leaves us with 1. So we're ready now to go ahead and set up that line integral and evaluate. So again, we have taken our vector line integral of the gradient of phi dot the differential dr, and we converted this to the integral over c of the parameterized vector field, vector f of r of t, dot r prime of t, our tangent vector, dt. So plugging in what we just found, we have the integral from 0 to 2 of the dot product we found to be just 1, dt. So integrating, we have t from 0 to 2 
that's 2 minus 0, for a beautiful final answer here of 2. So that was part A, evaluating using a parametric description of our curve. And now for part B, we want to do the same thing, but we want to use our fundamental theorem of line integrals. So again, let's start simply by recalling the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So we recall that if we have a conservative vector field, vector f being equal to the gradient of phi, then we know our line integral will be path independent. So that means our line integral over C of the gradient of phi dot the differential d vector r is equal to phi of our parameterization vector r. And we evaluate here from the endpoints of C, so from A to B. And we simply just evaluate. So we have phi of B minus phi of A. So this reminds us that the integral simply depends on the value of the endpoints. So what we want to do here to begin is to find the parametric description for our potential function. And so we were given the potential function phi of xy, which is equal to 2x plus 3y. And we were also given the parameterization of our curve, vector r of t, whose components are x of t, y of t. And here we were given x is defined as 2 minus t, and y is defined as t. And this again, this is where t is an element of the closed interval 0 to 2. So finding phi of our parameterization vector r of t, we want to replace the x and y components with the components or their corresponding components from the vector. So this will be 2 multiplied by x of t plus 3 multiplied by y of t. So plugging this in, we have 2 multiplied by 2 minus t plus 3 multiplied by t. And simplifying, we'll have 4 minus 2t plus 3t, which leaves us with 4 plus t. And we're ready now to go ahead and apply that fundamental theorem. So you can say by the fundamental theorem of calculus, or specifically here of line integrals, we have our line integral over c of the gradient of phi dot the differential d vector r is going to be phi of the parameterization vector r of t from those endpoints a to b. So these are the endpoints of our curve. And plugging in what we have, we know that phi of vector r of t is equivalent to 4 plus t, and the endpoints are the endpoints on t, so from 0 to 2. And so when we evaluate here, we have 4 plus 2 minus 4 plus 0, which leaves us again with that beautiful final answer of 2. So we applied evaluating our vector line integral for a conservative vector field two ways and attained the same answer.